Yeah. Bam, did I click the right one? Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the first episode of Jam Radio. Say Jam, Gerald. Oh, this way. Gerald. Oh, that way. Gerald from Core Gaming over there. How's it going? Hi. Nice to be on this, uh, this new podcast that you have. Yeah, it sort of sprung up out of nowhere, mostly because of the fact that I want to be able to pay my bills. And I realized, like, you know, there's no events, so I can't leave my house. So I should finally start that podcast I've been meaning to start for. Yeah, I remember uh, we, we talked about it like at, at Master Cup. Was it like two Master Cups ago? And like, you didn't have I think to other say. people were like, are you telling Gerald about that podcast you're never going to do? And I guess this is it, right? It only took uh, a, a world pandemic to to get it started, but... Hey, yeah, we're here now. That's the same podcast. That's that's the one. The also the one where at that Master Cup, I told you I wanted to do a fighting game glossary, and I wanted to use wrestling as an example of neutral, and you stole shamelessly stole that idea and made what? a video out of it. Shamelessly. What? I thought no, I th- I had like one little tiny reference in there, and it, it was like three seconds long, and it was like from uh, it was like Gita from that uh, that Amir Khan movie, um, mm-hmm. the true story where like. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got you. It was a good. It was a good example for sure. One of my favorite videos you've done. Hey, everybody. So if you guys don't know Gerald's stuff, he makes tons of awesome videos over at Corey Gaming, which you guys can check out. And uh, he has an event space, which is currently not open to the public, I believe, given the current circumstances, uh, which is unfortunate. Yeah. And, uh, the, you know, for this podcast, I was unsure who I was going to have as a first guest. And then I, I kind of thought about the current state of the world and like how so many freelancers and fighting games are doing stuff and event organizers. And I realized, like, in your case, I was curious about how you how you're doing. How's life? Because you create stuff and you put it on the Internet, but you also have an event space, which currently is obviously inoperable. Right. So, uh, yeah. How's life? How are things going? Yeah. So, I mean, um, you know, uh, opening up a, a new event space at the uh, at the start of this uh, virus thing is yeah probably not the uh, the best thing that's happened to me, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, but yeah, I mean it's it's uh, it's not only a, a place for you know events. It's uh, it's also my office. It's um, it's where we make content and uh, we make videos. Uh, as a company called Corey Studios, we actually do um, video content for just everything, not not just video games. Um, mm-hmm. Most of it's not video games. Uh, it's just Corey Gaming was kind of a project that I had during our downtime, and right. uh, and basically um, I mean, there's downtime now, so like you guys are probably expecting more videos. But yeah, I'm, I'm I have two analysis videos like on the way. One is like done actually, like it's like virtually done, and mm-hmm. uh, and um, yeah, this one's the the one that's coming out. I think I'm gonna try to release it on um, April first. April first, uh, and uh, yeah, so mark that on your calendars. It's uh, already it marked. April Fools. Yeah, it's gonna be. I already see the jokes. Like, oh, there's a there's a, Corey Gaming made a new video. I was like, oh, come on, I'm not falling for that April Fools. Dude, Gerald but, making a video. It hasn't been a year yet. Come on, like it's, <laughs> it, we gotta give it more time. He'll do it soon. Yeah, but um, that's. That video is going to be a very psychology heavy. Like it's going to be the last one was more like, I guess, game mechanics. Uh, why button action sure. doesn't work. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I guess. Well, the, there's a, the video after that was about tournament organizers, but I don't know how to divide like analysis and like, you know, what's not analysis. Uh, I just know that like, I guess there's a certain expectation for analysis video, but there's going to be um another one I think around May. Um, don't hold me to it, but I'm. <laughs> I'm working on it, and that one's going to be actually. Uh, I'll announce it here. That's going to be about commentary. Oh, sick! The whole so, video is about commentary. Yeah, I'm going to make a video about video game commentary, and uh, that's that's what I've been working on um, a lot recently. And uh, actually, it's it's kind of serendipitous that you uh, you contacted me about this podcast. I had so no idea. I that's the messed up part. You if uh, you wanted to be in the video. Oh, <laughs> uh, because. I heard you commentate stuff here and there. I do. Well, when Sometimes. events existed, I did commentate events. Yes, that you was used something. To. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was a that was a thing you used to do. Um So yeah, uh it's it's something I've been working on and I'm, of course I'm trying to get like uh you know, I'm I'm actually starting to commentate myself. Um I want to try to get into this thing. It's not just research. I want to get better at it and um recently uh, our our event space we can't do um 
offline events, obviously. Right. Um, but we can do online events, and we can broadcast from the studio. And we um, we recently had uh, Ichimayo and Dizziness, these uh, two guys that are um, you know, doing like online tournaments these days. Right. Uh, they did a Grand Blue tournament, and um, and uh, there was no English. Uh, there's no English uh, commentary, so right. um, I jumped on with uh, um, with uh, June, and we we just like we're just kind of amateur commentators, right? And we just like, yeah, you know, trying you, to be like everyone else. <laughs> you you say that about like like am- amateur commentators? It's so fascinating the way that works, right? Because in our scene, ninety nine percent of commentary is amateur commentary, right? Like for the majority of events, sure, it's, yeah, people jump on the mic and right, yeah, it's just like some guy who's in the tournament who just won a match, so he doesn't have to play for an hour. Like it's like I'll yeah. sit on the mic and talk about these people, right? Like that's basically exactly how it happens. So, yeah, it's kind of a natural progression, and it's very funny because, yeah, you you bring up the online tournaments too. Right now, it's it kind of feels like almost like a nuclear arms race of online events because everybody's like, oh no, there's no offline events. How can we like perfect the online event format or like people who have done it before, like maybe Valle and like Spooky, like other people who have done online events are like, oh, we should probably start doing our online events again because you know how else can the community connect, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, online events are kind of what people are doing during this um, this coronavirus stuff. Um, and I mean, it makes sense, obviously. And the internet's like pretty good here. In uh, sorry, my cat's uh, destroying uh, my property. Hold on. I was gonna say, I hear something. It sounds like. <laughs> yeah, that's the destructive one. That's Poncho, the red cat you see in the videos. Yeah, like, he's like, he like, like he like played hockey with my wedding ring, and it got lost, and I found it just yesterday. And, so anyways, um, where were we? Uh, Grand Blue. Uh, Grand Blue is the game that we were we were um, commentating during that time. It was a Grand Blue event. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of uh, a lot of names from um, the earlier, like Street Fighter Five days. Uh, like, remember XYZZY, right? Yeah. Uh, he actually won that online event. And his fairy is, like, ridiculous. Like, I, I was playing Catalina, just kind of like, oh, you know, I'll play kind of something that reminds me of a Shoto. Yeah. And I, I just dropped her and um, and and picked up Fairy. And I'm like, oh, this is it's actually not as easy as he makes it look. But yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, been commentating the, the Grand Blue commentary that I did. Uh, I, I started looking at the footage. Yeah. Uh, I remember from one of your how videos. How painful was that? Free interview. Uh, was that? I said, how painful was it to like look back? Oh, and... how painful! Uh, very painful. It's extremely painful because you're like, wow, that that was a completely incorrect fact. That was, uh, you know, that was cringy. Uh, wow, you, you know, you sounded really weird there. And it's like <laughs> you see a million things, right? It's like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's like everyone hates hearing their voice, mm-hmm. right? And it's like kind of like amplified because now you're like it's like your live voice like i I hate hearing my voice i don't know about you yeah uh, definitely it's i can't stand it (laughs) yeah um but yeah there's there's a lot more to commentary um uh, than just like i mean there's anyone can comment about things right as as long as you can talk you can comment about things but there's like a there's like an art to it and the more you do it the more you realize like the more you listen to yourself, the more you realize, like, oh, okay, I see what these other people are doing. These like veterans and yeah, and uh, yeah. Hopefully, I I can get better at this. I just it, I really enjoyed it. And if it's a game you enjoy, it's like it's way more natural. Just like the hype just spills out and stuff. So it's it's impossible to commentate a game you you don't care about. Well, I think well because you you can put in the time and effort to do do the game justice in terms of many different things, but you can always tell when someone doesn't like it or when they're phoning it in. I think it's like a hundred percent identifiable every single time when like the enjoyment of the game is not there to me anyway. I think I can, I can always recognize it. There's always like little things that just, they're like tells almost that give it away. But yeah, I was going to say, uh, yeah, as far as commentary video, a hundred percent call me. It doesn't matter what time zone it is, what place time, (laughs) call me up. I'll be like, Hey, what what the fuck, man? It's four in the morning. Like, and I'll be, I'll be like, sure. Yeah. What's going on? So I'm super. I'll see if I can bother like Estevan. Um, maybe, uh, maybe he'll do it for like, uh, maybe we can barter video interviews (laughs) in, uh, California, Korea. That's a good way to think about it. Yeah. I don't know if he's listening, but, um, but, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll hit him up about that and he, but I'm still in the research phases of the video. I'm still like trying to like I'm looking at like uh commentary uh footage and clips and and classic moments from mm-hmm. um you know just commentary historically 
uh, and uh, trying to trying to figure out like this this the the intrinsic value of commentary, right? There's yeah, and you can just have the game. There's like crazy matches, you know, that you can sure, watch. Yeah. Why, why is it like you watch the Moment Thirty Seven video and and you have these like memorable things that Seth Killian said. It, that's the and, part about the video that messes with you, right? Is when you think about the video, you don't think about the parry. Like, you think about the lead up that Seth, like, instills yeah. in your head of, like, the beast on the prowl. And, like, you think about, like, you know, like, rare footage of Daigo actually. Like, you think about, to me, when I think about the clip, I think about Seth's voice. And I think about the crowd. And then I think about the him yelling at the end. Like, it's madness. It's pure. Like, yeah. him yelling. is those Those things I remember as well as the moment. Like it's it's a complete yeah, part mean, of it. These are it's 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 so memorable that way. I mean, if you if you didn't have that commentary, it would just be a completely different kind of thing, right? Yeah, it, it just transforms it, and that's why like commentary is a transformative thing for fair use, right? It's they always use the word commentary. If mm-hmm. you look up like the Nintendo guidelines, Nintendo recently decided to like uh, you know ease up on uh, you know content creators, and the language they use is commentary, yeah. right? And that's because it's commentary is like hugely transformative and so you have like uh like um you know even in that that moment 37 video that little analysis little bit analysis that you get from seth killian like that's yeah i use that in um this um the new analysis video that's coming up it's the one that's very psychology based yeah um but like it's i mean the theme of that is like effort and patience and uh and in that video there's I, i i visit moment 37 so much my content because there's so much you can learn just it's like a gem of like uh you know just like fgc virtues and you know just um you know wisdom and and there's so many things you can learn from it but like even in this moment like um uh or in this video i talk about like the idea of like you know patience and and um you know i I have justin wong in the video uh, oh nice spoiler alert yeah but um he's i mean it's moment 37 yeah, but a lot of people like think of Moment Thirty Seven as like um, you know Daigo's like moment, right? But there's another side to it, and that's Justin Wong. And if you listen to Seth, there's like it's really interesting. Like he's making he actually is making Daigo frustrated. Like Justin mm-hmm. is doing that, and Justin's third strike Chun is like so famously like right like lame, right? So yeah. you know my friend um, my friend uh, Ryan, La- you guys know him as Laugh. Mm-hmm. He uh, he played like lame Chun and third strike in third strike with me and he was just being as lame as possible and like i just couldn't i just couldn't get to him it was like the most, one of the most frustrating experiences like yeah you finally like, corner her like, and she just like wall jumps out and like parries yeah, and you follow like, her and, and you're and, like yeah yeah like it's amazing normals and like yeah super deadly like uh you know super art and like um and then he was like yeah so Joe, like when when justin plays like it's like 10 times worse than what you experience i'm like sure oh yeah. man like that's like and so like um so like the insight from moment 37 um that you get you uh you usually get like the, the the parry aspect but if you watch justin playing daigo's just like getting angry and dashing into his yes. like normals like yeah. you can tell he's so frustrated and he just and, throws like, like ex fireball ex fireball dash, dash like he's playing yeah he, the way yeah. he's playing you can tell yeah and like um and and so like there's there's something interesting about that and uh, in my in the next analysis video i you know there's there's parts about that um it's a it's a good one. It's like I think it's going to be a good long one. Like I think like 13, 14 minutes or something. Nice, like yeah. it's it's going to have a lot of meat to it. I've, That's chunky. Uh, I th- I think yeah, it's interesting. A, you said like you did a psycho psychological video this time because I feel like almost all your videos in some way or another cover like the psychology of fighting game. Even if the last video was like largely mechanical, it's also like why the mechanics of it don't always work, right? Like I think the why of oh, it is yeah. really important. Yeah. There's always a there's always a psycho- psychological component. A lot of it like goes in together, right? What's what's cool about fighting games is that you know like all these things kind of come together. So yeah. it's um yeah. it's never like um you know I think chess is like one of the coolest games ever. I don't I don't I'm not really good at. It. I have friends who love it. Yeah. Um, I have friends who play like like ten chess matches at, at the any same given time moment or something. Yeah. That. Yeah. Like, um, but that, that's the difference, right? The game completely changes when you don't have as much time to think. Yeah. Uh, so the idea of um, uh, another idea that I put in this video is, um, I mean, if you just look at like, uh, uh, like in the classically in Street Fighter Two, you have like the sure you can. That's like so hard to do. The input leniency wasn't really quite there uh, in, in Street Fighter Two, 
and uh, it's like you're, you're anti air, right? Yeah. Uh, but then there was the crouching fierce, where you know there's like there's a, like, people call it the poor man's uppercut. There's like sure, some yeah. a, lot, a lot of things that that move got called because like it was kind of seen as like the oh you can't do the shore you can, but you can you can do you know, that's why you're using that move like the 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 easy version, right? Yeah. And yeah. The, the thing is, if you look at smart players like the top players, they don't always DP. They use moves like that in certain situations, and that's because you know there's some moments where you just can't put the DP motion, the DP input in time, and uh, you know that that kind of stuff is really like that kind of stuff is really interesting because on a deep level, there's um, there's a lot of psychological stuff going on. That'll be in the next video. That, I mean, that's what I you know when people think about fighting games, they've always they always call it like chess like they're like it's like faster chess. But to me, the thing is, is because it's faster, I don't like the comparison so much because. The point of fighting games it's, is it's a mix of your reactions and your mental game and other stuff, right? It's not just like you sit there and you have time to think about what's happening. Part of the interesting yeah, things yeah. about fighting games is the speed of it naturally makes errors or like uh, making the correct choices or decisions or answering certain things impossible, right? Just the speed of the game naturally makes it unable to happen. Unlike something like chess where you can sit and stare and think of every possibility. It's like a very different kind of game in so many ways that I think... The direct comparison is not always as accurate. People are like, it's fast chess. And I'm like, well, that's like the opposite, right? It's like it doesn't quite in yeah. my head, it doesn't the comparison doesn't always sit because of that. Yeah, I think I feel like I feel like that that's kind of been like an old comparison. Yeah. Um, used like since way back in the day, because I think it's kind of one of those things where it's like people are, people do think when they see fighting games and they don't know anything about it, they're like, oh, there's nothing going on. And then like people just want to be like, oh, no, it's actually a game. And like, yeah, I feel like chess is kind of the. The game where like people can be like oh okay that's a oh it's a it's, it's an actual game now and yeah and of course that analogy only goes so far but yeah there's definitely like the the you, you the fact that you have to make like huge decisions in such a short period of time and if you look at these games if you compare it to um like a game like starcraft where like in in starcraft you're making so many decisions over a long period of time well right. often that unless you like unless people are rushing and, and yeah, getting yeah. hit by that but yeah. Um, but like it's uh, it is a very short period of time, and because of its arcade origins, the these games have like what like ninety nine second timers, which are not actually ninety nine seconds. You're right. So those those things are um, like even if you just like uh, even if you just like don't play, let go of the controller. Like in the arcades, if people if the game was on, nobody was playing, it would just the timer would run out. So um, so it's very fast paced. But then at the same time, what's so interesting is you can make people lose patience. Yeah, it's like like you can make people lose patience in a game that just whizzes by. Right? Yeah, in exactly. A, a you can make that, them play faster than they already were, right? Which is something so yeah. interesting about it. Yeah, and I, I, that's that's like the ultimate expression of like how you can get so get into someone's head, right? It's like in this short period of time, you're still like you know messing with someone. It's like it's like you know if you just think outside of it, you're like. Oh well, he couldn't wait thirty more seconds. Like yeah, but when you're in the game, that that thirty seconds, it's excruciating. Just, like, it's the it's hardest period it's of like, your life. It's the worst thing you've ever dealt with in your life up to that point. Yeah, and like fighting games yeah. are unique. I almost, I think almost sort of unique in the way that like they make you feel in those moments because there's almost no satisfaction greater than feeling the frustration of your opponent, whether it's because you're slowing things down or because you just overwhelm them and they like panic and uppercut and you block it and they're just like. <laughs> Uh, there's nothing I could do, right? It's like that kind of feeling that you can create is like, to me, like pure satisfaction because just through your gameplay and the way you're expressing and fainting and like attacking makes someone feel hopeless in the game, right? That kind of stuff, it's, it's such a unique feeling that I think fighting games really encapsulate so well in such a short period of time. Yeah, I've been playing uh, Grand Blue. Um, I've been playing Fairy. That's a good choice for this. Yeah, yeah. So like, um, yeah, like Fairy has like, Kind of like really long normals. The whip, um, the whip is not disjointed. It's actually like you can hit the whip. Yeah, I, I learned. <laughs> but um, but yeah, like um, if you if if you just uh, there's it's no way to escape it. I feel like in if you're getting like pressure, like as a as a fairy player, like you're if you start getting mauled, you're you just have to like take it right. Yeah, and it, there's, there's no. It's like when you're when you're getting when you're getting mauled, is you just there's this feeling that goes up. It's like, oh, I got to... just like, like yeah, you can yeah, feel it. Do something like there's... Yeah. And, uh, and then you end up pressing a button and then like eating a big combo, right? Yeah. And like, it's like, it's like, I think there's a constant battle with that where you're trying to, you know, um, 
make the right choices. And even at the highest levels, you see the best players, uh, they're still, they still succumb to that. And it's, uh, I think, yeah, that's what, that's what makes these games cool. And in the same round, the fairy player could have, you know, that unique feeling that builds up when like a rushdown character gets in on you and you're like, oh God, I just lost the round. That same yeah. like kind of terror that they feel, that kind of thing that you feel in your chest, you can make your opponent feel when they just get hit by normal after normal after normal and they're trying to get in and then they jump finally and you counter hit and tear them with like fairy's button. Yeah. And they like the way the rushdown fear character feels can be the same feeling that you feel when they get in in the exact same round yeah. and both of you can feel like that brief flash of hopelessness where you're like oh god and then you're like wait wait <laughs> if i just sit here i'll be okay if i just wait and then like try it's like you're to constantly talking yourself off the edge right you're like okay i'll be fine yeah. if i just wait and i just don't hit a button and they throw you twice yeah. and you're like okay maybe i should try to do and then it's just such a it's yeah you have to battle yourself so much yeah um and it's really satisfying when you can kind of take a grasp of that right when mm -hmm. you can kind of you find some kind of control over that. So like there's um, a match yesterday where like I was getting mauled and I was doing like desperate DPs, right? And, uh, and you know, there's a moment where I'm like, oh, like I feel like doing a, a, a desperate DP right here. Like, I, like I, I have to do this. And then I'm like, no, wait, he's gonna know. Yeah. You know you're gonna do that. And basically as soon as I got up, I just walked up and through. And yeah. you know, throw ranges in that game are super short. It's yeah. like kind of risky thing to do, but like, it's like, you know, there's, there is that component. And then like, it's like, I was like, oh man, like he totally was baiting my DP and, you know, I got him with the throw and, and it's like, you feel like you've kind of had control over that crazy emotion that, that, that builds up. So, yeah. um, yeah. it's like these kind of things where you, you feel really like, um, you get really hype about, I think. I was going to ask you, you mentioned earlier that you're in the research process of commentary it seems to me like there's sort of a natural progression in a lot of the videos you make anyway, but like, it seems like kind of like maybe some of the stuff you thought about when making this video led you to the next topic anyway. But like, since, since you're doing the research process of commentary, like how, how long do you expect that you're going to stay researching commentary? Like, and how broad are you going? Cause I, you and I were talking before about how, like it's very easy and and like typical of people to look in so like they look into their community and they have they struggle to look at the big picture of whatever their focus is or even look outside of like whatever their you know like if you're trying to research commentary it might seem natural for you to look at like fighting game commentary but then like the next progression is like sports commentary probably right or like olympic commentary or like you know something slightly broader but like how broad do you want to go is that your cat hitting your camera yeah that's my cat hold on a second yeah i'm i'm listening yeah i was gonna say damn look at the cat hair on his shirt uh i was gonna say like yeah, yeah it's sorry, um, this is, all right maybe maybe i can pacify him like, yeah how is. how broad are you looking and like how it, does it happen in your video like where me like you go looking for an answer to some solution and you find it in some completely obscure place i'm oh, sorry i think he's throwing up hold on he's, he's throwing up <laughs> See, if this is a Gerald YouTube video, he could just cut this part out. This wouldn't have to be in the video, but instead, <laughs> instead it happened. Hey, chat room. You know, sometimes the cat's yakking. Hairballs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was right, so good. All right, I'm back. Uh, minor emergency is a hairball. A hairball. Um, it was like. He was like gagging like on me and I was like, oh, you can't like just you can't just throw up like on me on air. Right. That would have like, been. That no, he could. That would have been sick. That would have been a great episode. Yeah, I wasn't going to give you that. Right. So damn, <laughs> yeah, I put him down. And I, 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 yeah, it's he's OK. Sometimes as a hairball. Crisis averted. OK, yeah. So you're talking about commentary. Um... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. So how often do you find in a video or something where you're researching does does the place you find a solution or answer for whatever you're looking up or trying to figure out happen that's like wildly different or out of whatever your like community like searching is? Yeah, so like a big part of um, a big part of when I research a video is obviously people know that I kind of look at other things um, to relate to the FGC because right. it's there's a lot of insights you can learn from other communities and um, not just other communities but just like um like just other other games and and hobbies and mm. and all sorts of different uh uh different fields right so 
um, the way that I'm kind of looking at this commentary thing is from like a bigger perspective, right? I'm looking at um, like classic commentators. Um, some of my favorite, my favorite commentators growing up was um, was Al Michaels on a, mm-hmm. he was doing Monday Night Football and like that that guy just like for some reason like I I wanted to watch like football because of because of him like it was it's just he would kind of say stuff that was a little bit inappropriate like just writing the line and but then it's like wow it's on national tv like can he say that and but then like he's just on point about you know on his analysis and he's got a cool voice and it's just like this is this is awesome like i i you know i want to tune in he really adds to that and i'm trying to figure out like one of the one of the things i'm trying to figure out about this video is like looking for the intrinsic intrinsic value of commentary right right and uh you know why we have commentary and um i guess everything is kind of commentary right um if sure. you look at media in general everyone's commentating on talking about stuff and um and, it, and it's reactions right it's people like you, people reacting to things that's kind of the the thing that um that makes most media valuable if you if you look at it like commentators are reacting to the game and then they're saying um you know talking about what they see and uh if you look at a video essay it's kind of you know yeah. reacting to a certain topic um it's and uh and basically i i gather a lot of information i research a lot and then um i don't know what my theme or my thesis is until like later right so i'll be right. working on i'll come up with my i'll come up with my theme and thesis like 80 percent into the project into the video and that's kind of like, it's kind of, I don't know, it just ended up being the way I do things. I know some people will have like, I'm going to make a video about this and then it'll become, you know, uh, that video that they were talking about. Right. But right. Uh, I kind of do it the other way. And I know like there are people who do it, like some people do it one way, some people do it the other, but I do it the other way where it's, I, I don't know what my video is really going to be about until I start like I think I know what it's about, and then I'll, I'll even have like working titles. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, for example, that that video about why button mashing doesn't work was that video was originally a, a Punch Planet video. <laughs> I see. So okay. I wanted I wanted I wanted to make a video about like why I think this game is cool, right? And um, and then I was like, I got to the part, I got to a part where like I kind of like how the the neutral felt in that game, right? Mm-hmm. And then it's like, well, I can't just make a video where I'm like this game is dope because the neutral feels like cool. Real cool awesome. and good that's, and stuff. Yeah. That's not, yeah. Cool and good uh, and interesting. And like, that's not, that's not content, right? That's just, there's nothing there. Right. So then I'm like, okay. So I started breaking down the idea of like footsies and the idea of like some of these mechanics. And then right. this, it became like way too big. I was like, holy crap. This sure. is like, I can see how that could happen. Some, yeah. And then like, um, and then it, it, it kind of built up into this thing where I'm like, kind of like describing like some of the basic like things in fighting games like the yeah eventually you hit the point where you're like what even is neutral right you're like what yeah. even what, yeah, what, what does that even mean it's like yeah yeah and um and you know there's things about ranges and everyone talks you know people like to throw that word neutral around like, yeah oh that game sucks it doesn't have neutral or you know what does that even mean right and it's right. kind of become a buzzword right and it's like yeah how can you how can you like dissect that and um and the idea of like why button mashing doesn't work came from the idea that like, you know, this is kind of, this is the stuff that people who think fighting games are button mashing don't know. And this is well-meaning people. I mean, it's not like yeah. when people say like, oh, that's a bu- just a button bunch. Of, it looks like just a bunch of button mashing. These are like 99% of these people are, are just people who just don't know about that thing. They could be a rocket scientist, but they don't know about fighting games, right? And yeah. it's, and, uh, and so, this I thought this would be the perfect information for um, for someone to uh, to understand these kind of things better. And I, I kind of it's it's been a useful video to show like some of my friends and, and family. Um, I use it all the and, time. It's like to me the most when I know people who are not interested in fighting games. Like it is to me the most simplified version of like a teaching moment and like a glossary that I could show them that they'll be like, wow, this is really fascinating, right? It's it feels so general, and it seems like your videos in particular break past. I guess the niche of fighting games, it takes why we like fighting games, but tr- like educates people who are more general in a way that I think people really appreciate for sure. Yeah, it's um, it's kind of like an explanation. So mm-hmm. um, a, a thing that I like to do in my videos uh, is I don't like to introduce terms or, 
or you know like like terminology like yeah early on i like to just explain what the thing is right yeah and um you explain that and then you can put a term to it later right so yeah. um if you if you put a term in the front it's always going to be it's always going to turn people away it'll always hit worse for sure i i yeah, think it's like you know, I was yeah. going to say in terms of all fighting game content, that is something people struggle with a lot, right? Is like, if you go to like, I don't know, if you type in like, Grand Blue versus Fairy tutorial, like the first thing that will come up and they'll be like, all right, so Fairy is a zoner who relies a lot on like, you know, frame traps and set play. And also she has and you're like, dude, I don't know what just happened. Like so quickly, we yeah. went to a play like you're speaking another language, right? You're like, I, I don't understand what just happened. And that happens so quickly in our content. And it's it's so fast that it deviates away from teaching what a beginner is even looking for a lot of the times, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, there's kind of um, uh, there's there's kind of a study done. Um, uh, actually, here, let me just look at it real quick. But anyways, this kind of, uh, uh, there's a study done that kind of um, showed that, like, if you needlessly using, like, big words and, and big terminology when simple words would suffice um, actually uh, makes you less credible mm, okay. and makes you seem less intelligent. So, you know, like, um, I'm sure everyone's kind of been there where they, kind of uh they have a paper assignment and they, they kind of just bs through it and mm -hmm. maybe throw some words here and there and that's actually like you know that's actually the opposite of what you want to do right uh, yeah. what you want to do is you want to use simple language um you want to use uh you, you're, you're the point is to get uh communication across right you're trying to like get people to um to understand what you're saying and um the more you you put barriers to that the more it'll you know turn people away and uh and yeah it, it actually affects how credible you seem as a person too so if you look at like top commentary word choice and stuff like that um you know they're not just you know commentators aren't just throwing out like these oh i bet you don't know what this word means or, i bet you don't know what that is like <laughs> yeah I mean, i'm sure there are some commentators who do that like some of the people who, who jump jump into it and like want to show off like Sure. Oh, do you know about you know this option select? Uh, yeah, this you know. fuzzy OS mash on defense. He did yeah. a fuzzy guard defense OS mash. Tiger yeah, D three sixty inescapable unblockable. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think that kind of applies to just you know when you're explaining anything or any education. Yeah. I think it's, it's it's good to um, yeah to keep it keep it simple and not needlessly uh, uh, technical. Yeah, I think that sort not of happens. Needless. I was gonna say it happens a lot in commentary as well. It's like as you. It's funny because that kind of commentary, I think, happens a lot at the mid and upper mid. Like, commentators in this section will do it a ton. But then once you get to the top, it's like low soccer kick. You know, it, like, it becomes the most simple things you can think of when people start talking about stuff. They're like, uh, Tekken commentators just say he went mid and he went low. They don't say, oh, he did down two, three into, like, four, back three, four, because you can, you know, fuzzy. The, it just becomes, like, the most simple things you can. And the kinds yeah. of stuff that you remove from that, you can just add in later and sprinkle in as like a teaching moment instead of just, you know, needlessly like, uh, I guess, crowding up your play by play or like the intensity of the moment by saying stuff that they won't understand. You know what I mean? Yeah. And for sure, there's there are moments where you do need to bring out some of the more technical stuff. If there's some sure. brilliant thing that somebody did and, and you have to use the technical stuff, then then by all means use it. But I guess this uh, the lesson is, you know, just don't use it needlessly, right? Mm. Just bring it out when when you um, when you have to. And it's also kind of interesting. There's also um, in in my research with commentary, uh, I, I realized I've I've looked at a lot of um, StarCraft commentary, and um, and uh, I looked at a lot of like uh, the, the taste to taste toasts duo, yeah. right? Um, they're kind of like basically like the grandfathers of you know esports commentary, um, you know, to to a certain degree. And uh, they, um, and they have like different sizes of tournaments that they do, right? So there, there's like GSL, which is kind of like this thing they do in Korea, yeah. right? Um, and uh, there's like a lot more of these tournaments, and they're not as big budget as like some of the stuff they do, like uh, you know, um, you know, in other tournaments, right? And uh, and you can tell that their commentary style actually changes. There's there's um, it's funny when I see GSL like. Those guys actually kind of remind me of like FGC commentators. They're just, they're big chilling, right? It sounds like a podcast. Yeah, almost. they're just they're chilling. They're they're cracking jokes. They're having a good time. And yeah. when they want, like, they'll get into some of the really technical 
nitty gritty. Like every once in a while, they'll see something that's um, that's kind of like uh, you know really rare in the match, and they'll they'll just you know go for that. And then when it gets to like the the, the bigger tournaments, like um, I've I watched the stats versus Cyril, the the Finnish guy. Mm-hmm. Um, that that tournament, the commentary was um, completely different. very different. Yeah. yeah, it's just like, and there's that's an audience thing, right? Mm-hmm. So um, one aspect of my video that I'm working on is is uh, is kind of about audience, right? It's um, there's also that thing that you have to consider is who you're talking to, and um, and yeah, I mean it's and I think the FGC in general, like um, the audience has been changing. Right, um, and and there's like new people and oh, yeah. more and more new people all the time, and uh, it's you know like the commentary you know kind of has to change to a certain degree uh, to kind of accommodate for that. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be worse or you know like you know boring or anything, right. um, but it's definitely like there's uh, you kind of have to know your audience, right? And um, yeah, yeah, I think I think in, in that sense, I think we. For me, like we kind of had our, I would, I say us. It's like the Steve Rip and I had like our own commentary boot camp sort of thing that we did many years ago called Wizard World. It was like this traveling gaming comic convention thing that we got hired to do. And uh, when we did it, we it was essentially a not very watched but like extremely consistent way for us to practice commentary. So it became like our boot camp because we figured out what we could or couldn't do. And, you know, Steve and I are on there commentating Naruto and like, you know, commentate like we did like Overwatch. Like we did all this random stuff that we had no business doing. And while doing it, I think all of us learned like the kind of audiences you will commentate for. And also like when it's appropriate to be more relaxed versus something that is more serious based on like the situation that you're in. And I think what ends up happening a lot with a lot of commentators is, yeah, like you said, when, when you get into the biggest stages, like even commentary for like the semis of a tournament versus like the finals of a tournament or what I would do if I was watching a tournament match, if I was commentating a match in tournament in the finals at top eight of something like Evo versus how I would do commentary at home on my stream for analysis or, you know, anything else like that is very different. And I think what ends up happening is like, when you think about how to change your commentary for stuff like that, you become just more and more versatile, I guess, and adaptable. And it's important to realize like, a lot of times in commentary, less is more. And some of the most simple things that you can do is just sell the big moments and hit the storylines. And all the stuff that's like, oh, you know, he hit like this fuzzy Abare match that is like, it kind of all goes out the window near the end when you just say, this is why Sonic Fox versus Goichi is such a sick match. It doesn't matter almost anything else, the context of anything else. It's just, these are why these two people fighting against each other is so fascinating. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At, at a certain point, you have to prioritize what's going on or what yeah. you're going to say uh, yeah some some things uh yeah it changes depending on the the tournament that you're in um yeah so i i guess like you have a lot of content uh you, yeah you have this podcast mm-hmm. and stuff um, actually i'm kind of curious i i was actually kind of excited for this podcast when since, since you mentioned it but like now it's a real thing and like <laughs> i'm actually the first guest on here this, this is kind of interesting because like it's kind of funny because like this is also a thing with like uh, tasteless. Uh, tasteless yeah. was talking about a podcast, and then like I wasn't his first guest, but like I was like his third guest on that. That makes sense. And yeah, it was like the, uh, I don't know. I guess like I, I appear early on in people's podcasts, but <laughs> well, his his podcast has been very successful, right? Yeah, yeah it's been. Uh, it's now like it now has video. Um, oh sh- like snap! Yeah, so there's like it used to be just audio and. Mm. Uh, and so it's it's cool. It's definitely growing, and um, it's um, yeah. He's he's got a lot. He got a lot of FGC people because yeah. Uh, Evo Japan happened, and uh, we went to uh, yeah, we went to Japan, and and yeah, he has yeah like guests like yeah like James Chen on yeah. there, and yeah. Anakin, and yeah, he had Anakin yeah. on there too. That's right, and like he had yeah he had, like Jinhee or something. She was on there, and like yeah, Jinny that was like in Korea, Korea, I think. Yeah, and like um, yeah, I, I think. I feel like a, a ton of his guests are it's been fighting it it's it's been like a an, a fighting game <laughs> podcast that like yeah i mean to yeah, be fair it's, it's in, an echo fighting game, I guess. <laughs> in our scene like you know i don't know if this is how you operate too but a lot of the times when i want stuff like the content i end up making is the content i want i don't know if that's how you are as well like 
there would be absolutely. things that I really wish that existed, like a podcast or even like my stream became like a late, it, it became like a talk show, like a morning talk show almost because I was kind of like, why doesn't this exist? You know, and when I looked around, instead of being that guy that was like, where are all the, I was like, I should just try it. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's yeah, how yeah. you are too. Yeah, um, definitely. I think one of the one of the key things with content is uh, making something that you would want to watch, yeah. right? So there's a lot of like, kind of the mentality of like, okay, uh, you know, I need to like get some hits or subscribers or yeah. get some ad revenue. So uh, let me just whip this out and whip this out, whip this up, <laughs> and uh, so that's a different kind of content. Although on yeah. the right website, it's, you know. it's a different kind of content, but. Um, you know, people just want to just like phone it in and then just be like, all right, here's content. Call it content and then put it up, upload it mm -hmm. without thinking about like, is this, you know, would I watch this? And um, if you wouldn't watch it, then how can you be upset or surprised if other people won't, right? So yeah. um, I think, uh, and I, I fall into that trap too, where, you know, I'll be like, um, oh yeah, people are going to love this. But then I, I didn't think about like, wait, would I... If I were in their shoes, I want to watch it. And yeah. I realized, well, maybe this isn't the most compelling content. And, you know, like, um, and I think everyone falls in that trap. It's not like yeah, uh, you, you can be completely impervious to it because you can't be the audience. Um, so it's a, uh, oh, hold on a second. Your cat's going nuts. Dude, the cat has been... I'm fucking gerald shit up this entire before yeah, we started it, the cat was he was i think the cat owns the house to be honest yeah i have two of them i mean that, that's oh, the adage that uh what the cats actually own people and yeah people don't own cats yeah. it's like why they so. were drawn on the pyramid walls and stuff <laughs> yeah that's what they say it's pretty insane um uh yeah so anyways yeah make making content that you particularly want to watch is uh is kind of is something that if you if you do that, then it's also something that you you can be more proud of. Yeah, uh, sure. the content will be something that um, you'd also want to share and show people, and and it's just it just makes things so much better. And if if it's something that um, maybe not doesn't get the subscribers or views that you want from that video, um, it's still something that you can be very happy that you made. Um, one of my videos. Uh, it's called the the need for the need for community. Yeah, I love and that, that video like is kind of like that's such a weird abstract topic. It's like, are you you know, like, do can you really analyze something like that with the sieve and, skill trees and everything that you had? Yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, it, it's something that you don't really like think of when it's uh, as being popular content on YouTube, right? Sure. So, yeah. um, and I work probably like more on that video than like probably any video that's the hardest i've ever worked on a video and i was at a i was at a point where like i was at a point of no return i, I had invested so much into it and i was like man this is awesome but i kept on thinking are are people really going to be into this a video called the need for community that's like yeah it's such a like it's not like it's not like you know like try not to laugh challenge at all right, right it's yeah like, it sounds like really educational and you know like dry <laughs> And then um, I, I released that video, and um, and it didn't get a, as many hits as my other videos. Uh, now I think it's like up to like now it has like a decent amount of hits, but like still compared to other videos, it right. doesn't have as much. But um, but you know that's that's something that I accepted. Like this is something that I want to exist. I want this to be there. And then people have come up to me and they've. A lot of people tell me like that's my favorite video on your channel. Yeah, I can and, see that. Um, that's you know that's uh, you know that means a lot, right? Um, even though it doesn't have like uh, you know the hits three of, like, million views on like, YouTube or whatever, right? Yeah, like I sometimes I know that a video is gonna get a lot of hits if like the salt video, like everyone yeah like loves talking about salt and it's funny and there's like yeah a lot of jokes you can have and like, a lot of memes like a video like that I I kind of knew before releasing like this this is probably going to get um, uh, a decent amount of views. But yeah, generally, you can't ever predict like what's going to be a hit or not. I didn't yeah. think that any of my videos would be seen um, as much as they have been. Like, yeah. it's, it's weird. There's a moment where one of my videos, um, and it's a video that I'm not too proud of because it's kind of rushed it and just like, like 
I don't know, I was just on this video high. I was just kind of making stuff with little research. And uh, it, was a, it was a video about graphics, mm-hmm. um, what graphics matter in fighting games. It's a very half-baked video. But, like, for some reason, that, that got picked up by the YouTube algorithm. Right. And that video, like, started, like, it broke 100K when I was just used to getting, like, you know, tens of thousands of views. That broke, right. like, 100K. And then all the other videos started, like, going up in numbers. Um, and um, And I realized, like, this is... This is some kind of like algorithm stuff. Somebody picked it up or something like. Yeah, for some reason it, it turned into people's recommended, and then they started watching it, and then for some reason it just it blew up, right? Yeah, and then like the whole channel blew up after that. That's when like um, like from that one video, like it it started getting recommended on people's you know um, feeds, and then like people started like binge watching, and like so that's that's another thing about YouTube. Uh, Another thing about YouTube is it's it's so unpredictable, right? Yeah. So and to your you, you point, like, that's like it, yeah, that no one knows about for later, you know, like yeah. And to your point, like you said, it's not a video you're not particularly proud of or anything. Like I think it's very likely that a lot of people out there just put out thing after thing after thing that is good, maybe, but it, like it's not being picked up by anybody. And then at a certain point, something hits, and it might not even. It's more than likely not going to be your favorite work you've ever done, right? Like the video yeah. that, <laughs> that got a lot of viewership for me was me yelling about netcode and like things you should have in fighting games and i there was no like almost nothing fancy about that video at all it was just me like i got real pissed one day after watching ti and just started yelling about how fighting games being a fighting game fan is suffering essentially and then it just it just like it was all over the front page of reddit and like people were really happy about it and stuff and it's funny how that works because you know you think about all the other stuff that you make that is like you you put like i don't know thousands of hours into studying a game so that you can do match analysis on this and that and you're yeah. doing like doing all this time and effort and one day i just was like an old man yelling like you kids you don't realize how much this sucks and like a lot of people watch it and it's so bizarre to tell people that but one, the most important thing to me that i think that you brought up was yeah i think when you're creating you have to create stuff that you're not only a fan of but that you're proud of doing and if your only goal and motivation motivation is for people to like watch it and get money and be youtube famous so that you can have your cats throw up on a podcast like (laughs) it's not quite the same glamour as you think if you're not creating with like something that you really care about or enjoy i think the sourness of things you dislike or creating things that you feel pressured to do will show in your work a lot of the times. Yeah, it'll show in your work, but also it's not uh, as sustainable, right? So yeah. um, one of the best um, articles I've ever read on um, YouTube success uh, was by um, was by Freddie Wong, the uh, yeah. uh, yeah. when the, the rocket jump. Rocket jump, and yeah. It, it, a good point that he made in that article is... Um, it's really if you're if you're making content that you're you you don't enjoy yourself, um, you're not interested in. The problem with that really is that it's just you're going to give up because there's going to be a time where you just spent hundreds of hours into this thing, and then, you know, you know er- everyone on the YouTube comments are like insulting you, yeah, and you're not getting any ad revenue, and there's like it's just all negatives, all disadvantages, and. If you don't have that one thing where you're like, well, I'm still proud that I made this and this is this content's awesome, uh, then you're just going to give up. Because yeah. if you don't give up after that, then like maybe you're a masochist or something. But yeah, like how could you continue after that, right? You made something you hate. You, you hated it the whole time. It sucks. Yeah. You release it. Everybody tells you you suck. You're like, all right, well. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's a, it's kind of a dead dead end. And it's kind of a yeah. trap, too, because you, you think that like, oh, you know, that these people are definitely going to watch it if I do this thing, even though I don't know anything about it or care about it. It's it's a trap. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely very dangerous, and I think it's very bad for you too. I I hear this with streamers a lot, where streamers are like just constantly miserable because whatever game gets them the most viewers, like they really hate playing it, and they feel yeah. like the urge that like I have to get on and stream it every day because otherwise my numbers are slightly lower or something right and they just like feel that dread about creation and like all that kind of stuff and it's like dude people can feel that when you're creating stuff and it's not it's not healthy for you and it's like your viewers will be unhappy so your viewers and and everything will go down anyway so it's like it just creates this black hole you know yeah yeah and there's 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 something that's be to be said about like you know keeping your keeping your sanity through all this right it's um it's uh one of those one of those things where um you know, it, it being, you know, being in front of like an audience, you, 
you do see a lot of abusive comments oh and, yeah and stuff like that and it's like and youtube is the uh, worst so i don't know how you survive like on twitch chat yeah you it pretty, scrolls pretty, pretty, pretty it's so rough. fast yeah. it goes away but you they have time to like all right what kind of hateful <laughs> shit can i say today like they have yeah. time yeah definitely i i still i read youtube comments on the early the early release of a video just yeah. to, to make sure that like there wasn't like a huge oversight or i i released a one of the videos I had to re-upload like three times or something because like yeah. there's like a little problem with each and then like I it was so stupid like finally like I, I was like this is the upload and then like JDCR has no subtitles and I'm like oh crap like and then like the in the comments they'll tell you they'll be like yeah dope video where where the subtitles for JDCR I'm like oh man like <laughs> and then I didn't enable the subtitles because I'm using new software no one cares about like why it just yeah the end product right jackie chan had a really um uh, uh funny interview where he's like you know like uh, about movies right it's like nobody cares if it's like it, it was a rainy day nobody cares like you couldn't get that shot because of this they just see the end product and they see good or bad and that's it like they see good or bad they don't see like yeah you know what you went through and and yeah so that's kind of i guess a, a comment on uh on the end product, I think Nintendo, um, uh, uh, Shigeru Miyamoto said something similar. Uh, you know, bad game will be bad forever, but yeah, um, on on like the idea of delaying was... games or whatever it was. Yeah, but I guess yeah. you can patch now, so yeah, I don't that's know. True. Patching games, releasing unfinished games and patching, it's the, it's the new hotness. Yeah, um, that is the way to do it. And then Cami, Cami's arms and Rashid's arms get swapped <laughs> around on the thumb. That was a horrifying image that you put in that video, by the way. <laughs> like the nerf and buff yeah, video was, with like rashid's arms yeah. and legs gone and stuff oh, that, that's that, horrifying that, yeah it's uh it's yeah yeah nerfs and buffs are kind of that's a modern fighting game thing that i think it's just something that uh, competitive players have to get used to yeah um and have to understand it's it's kind of like it, it, it's funny because like there's kind of a meta now right with like yes. of course there's the twitter meta where like you tweet about how bad like your character is character. to like bait yeah them. tweet about how bad your character is or like you know like you know, talk about like everyone else's character and like not yours. Um, how how good other characters are yeah. and like kind of this meta going on. But then there's like the devs. You don't know what they're thinking. And um, I guess developers can do it better in worse ways, right? Like on on one end, you don't want drastic changes, right? And right. you don't want like right. something that you've been working on to just get completely tossed out. Um, and then again, um, you also don't want Leroy situations where it's just like flips the game like completely upside down like yeah it's so soon and quick but then like um with the uh the right before twt there's like they were waiting for akuma nerfs and uh they did that was it the 20 percent yeah um, the meter change nerf on his meter i actually had like a promo for my merch like 20 percent off and oh for, yeah genius yeah it was like it was like a event it was like a promotion based on a on a nerf in a fighting game like like wonder how many of those have, have been done right yeah probably but, not um, a ton. it's so yeah it's so yeah. interesting because there's so much on the line when you do stuff like that right it's such a yeah it's such a big deal to games nowadays for sure i like that you brought up people complaining about other people's characters to get intention i think that that is such a it's such a a powerful and now recognized strat like i see people on twitter who are like oh i see like you're gonna go after this character or that character or whoever like it's it's pretty funny to me to think about it that way yeah and i don't know how much the devs are are listening like it's yeah. they're listening to i mean you can't listen to everything people say on twitter then you're just beholden to the masses right yeah and uh your game is going to be made by twitter it's like it's terrifying i can't think of a worse thing than that right <laughs> um so like you have to kind of like you know stick to your guns and like um like the, the the nerf that they did to akuma that was kind of like it you can tell that was they're aware of the timing of the twt finals and yeah um you know they're they're like okay we need to do something that won't like change the gameplay so much and meter is kind of one of those things where it, you know it doesn't affect uh like you know like yeah frame it's data, like frame data or whatever combos. yeah yeah so um you can tell they, they were definitely conscious i don't know what happened with the leroy stuff um you know, I don't know how company structures work, uh, especially in Japan. I don't know. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Thankfully, that they, they they kind of like uh, put the brakes on that. But yeah, I think so. The, I think people are some people are maining Leroy now. Uh, yeah, he seems like a pretty good character still. I gotta say. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, I was going to say with everything going on, has your like priorities for the year shifted? I know mine have shifted. It's why a podcast, it took a pandemic for me to create a podcast, like a global <laughs> yeah. pandemic. I launched this week. I launched a D and D show and a podcast. That's how like important this pandemic has been to my career. But has yeah, anything like yeah, that changed in exactly. your head? Like, were you like, oh, I got to start cranking out analysis videos now? Or like, has it not affected you that much? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's definitely affected me. If, in a certain way, uh, in a certain like perverse way, it's it's kind of been good for content creators, I guess. Like, yeah. everyone's at home now, right? What do you do when you're at home? You just consume content, play video games. I heard Steam numbers were up, like uh, a significant percentage, like yeah. people playing games on Steam and buying games. Um, and... Uh, like I guess on the content side of things, it's it's it is a good time, right? Because um, you know uh, you know events are obviously like you just you just can't have them. Yeah, uh, it's even hard to like go out and and you know visit like a, a certain amount of friends that you have. Right. You know, yeah. like, there's there's like a like, mandate. Oh, You've got to. Go you're like yeah, you know I mean, it's me, the wife, two cats. We can have one person over, over right? Like five yeah. five yeah, people max, it's, right? One person can come over. <laughs> That's a yeah. rager. Uh, well, I, I guess also like right now in Korea, it's kind of been um, there's finally like now every day they're like um, more recovered than new case cases. So it's Dude, kind of like going down. There's Korea been a couple spikes. Is insane. Yeah, but, it's, yeah, but I mean, I, I think it's going to happen to everybody else. Yeah. Uh, it's just Korea just kind of got there earlier, but it's going to there's going to be a time where you hit that peak and then it's just going to start going down from there. But it's just like. Um, but yeah, it was it was insane because Korea was like one of the outside of China. It was like that the, it had like the most cases for bro. Then you guys you guys were like, Korean backdashing away from the, <laughs> the <laughs> pandemic. Like I yeah. I was watching like the things where they had like the you would pull up in a car and they would like swab you and then after oh, they yeah, swab you you just like go or whatever right and that was like the end like uh, and they're testing more than like anybody else by like a huge amount. Yeah, like, there's like three hundred over three hundred thousand tests now and then now like every time someone gets like someone's confirmed to have corona like everyone on their phones like they have like a government system where like Jeez. you get this weird alarm your phone has like this scary alarm sound like <laughs> yeah i have not heard it's this. Like, it's, yeah it's like a war alarm or something and then like you look at it it's like a message it's like some dude in your like 7-eleven like had corona just letting <laughs> you know right or some guy in this station uh had it and like watch out like so the government's like really tracking i mean in korea like you're on the grid like yeah they actually like it's a it's a it's a liberal democracy but like they have you know they have like systems where like they like your privacy definitely like there's there's a bit of invasion of privacy to for these kind of situations right. um i know in other countries it's you know something like that would be like too much and you know that's understandable nobody wants their privacy uh you know um you know violated so um but yeah in in korea it's kind of it's still like but the the problem with this thing is that it's it affects everybody. Yeah, so like everybody. it doesn't matter. It's like, oh, okay, like let's say Korea gets it under control, right? And then oh, let's have our, our you know, our event in Korea uh with internationals. Oh wait, internationals can't come, right? So even if like, you know, this is a thing with like uh um you know the the Tokyo Olympics, right? Yeah. So like um if that if it does go on, then it, it the problem is like it's you know everybody else like if everyone else can't come then you know like that's gonna be a big problem is it really events. the olympics if like you know you look at it and you're like that country probably shouldn't come in this country and there's a lot of cases <laughs> yeah. there and like it's it doesn't it's not the same you know yeah yeah it, it's it, it's a big problem in that sense and so it's kind of a thing that's affecting everybody and of course i can't travel uh, yeah. reasonably because everyone gets quarantined for two weeks if they even let you travel right and so like you know it's um there's some, uh, there's some, um, like my grandmother's in the hospital right now and my, my parents are in the States and mm. they can't come to Korea right now because of I this see. Corona stuff. And, uh, it's, um, yeah, it's just affecting everybody. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's like yeah. so horrible because like the, the thing is, is you have to quarantine people. Like I saw somebody like there was a a post where a woman got like engaged and she's like showing her grandfather through like a glass wall because she doesn't want to even be near someone who's older or at risk or whatever. And it's like, yeah, that's the current world we live in. Right. Like besides the, yeah. the situations with 
people who just have no work. Like, it's like, oh, suddenly, like, you know, everything non-essential work everywhere is, like, closed here in California currently, right? So, like, tons of people are just like, I don't have income for the next foreseeable future. Or I don't have, the, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Besides that, the the strain on relationships and, like, families and stuff, too, is humongous. Yeah, definitely. And, um, yeah, the, the the business aspect, obviously, people still have to pay rent yeah uh, for their you know if they if you're a business owner or uh salaries and stuff and then like a lot of people might be at work without like any work and you know they i i don't know about you but i fear drastically for our community right like because i feel like besides maybe of of all the full-time commentators at least like i think besides maybe me there's not nearly as many who are super sustainable off content alone compared to like the amount of money I suspect that minimum I lose 25 to 30 percent of my yearly income if events disappear. Right. Yeah. Which is like slightly replaceable probably via content. But like for everybody else where 85 percent of their income, 90 percent of their income is events, it's suddenly like such a huge deal. And so like I, I have to suspect the ripple effect on not only commentators, but like just everybody in our community or workplace is going to be like, whoa, what the hell am I supposed to do? Especially people who are on the cusp. Like, yeah. uh, you know, they've maybe they've been kind of on the um, uh, kind of just barely getting by. And um, this kind of became the nail in the coffin for a lot of those people. So, like, you know, if you're a business that's like not doing uh, too well, but you feel like you can kind of get by. But then this happens then that'll just that'll be like too much, uh, you know, too much to overcome. And yeah. I think that's that's going to happen. And then when when those businesses fail and the tenants move out and then the the you know the building owners like they don't they can't fill in tenants and yeah you know it's just yeah i guess that's that's an economic thing that's that's the next analysis really, video yeah the economics. effect of a pandemic yeah man it's uh yeah i hope uh i hope everyone's uh you know staying safe out there it's it's kind of a weird time yeah it's very strange for sure, for sure. it's why I, I wanted to ask you about what has changed i guess if anything right for your plans because i suspect most people are like their yearly plan especially in our community has drastically changed right yeah yeah so our event space is also an office it's yeah, also a studio good. for content creation so um i guess we we like i think in the past like week we filmed like i think like four yeah, four uh, guides, fighting game guides, cool. with like top players, <laughs> just like in the studio, like well polished, high, uh, well produced. But um, I don't know exactly when the, those will come out. But we've kind of been going ham on like making content because you can do that. You can just no one has to be in a place like you don't have to have more than ten people ever. Yeah. Um, yeah. To to produce stuff like that or to do an online event. So I think going forward, we'll, we'll probably just be doing those kind of things um, until this stuff uh, starts to ease up. And then, of course, like um, if it does ease up in Korea first, it, it seems like uh, Korea will be in like a uh, I heard in China, they're already like um, opening reopening theaters. And mm-hmm. like it's like China has like really put a, uh, a a grip on the whole like Corona thing. If you look at their they had the huge numbers, but now like it's just like dwindled and if that's you know, that's like even in Wuhan, like, you know, where the yeah the virus started, they're like, their numbers are really low. And like, if you go outside of Wuhan, like China's a big country, everyone feels like everyone thinks like China is just Wuhan. Yeah. Like, no, it's like, there's like, it's like a huge giant country where like some parts of the country, like the, like they haven't gotten Corona. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. And in, in those areas, they're, yeah, they're just kind of resuming life and so this kind of like a a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel i think um but uh i know i'm pretty hopeful that it will like uh you know the governments will like figure things out and people will do it in their own ways um maybe some will be more effective than others but eventually like it'll get figured out i i i heard like china was sending doctors to italy oh yeah that would make sense yeah if like um people around the world like start helping each other too like that's that, that can be a good thing, I think. Yeah. 
I suspect yeah. also, like you mentioned, there'll be a lot of online stuff and like way less gatherings and people are going to have to be a little bit more creative with what they create, right? I think especially like, you know, there's a lot of room to do cool and interesting stuff with fighting. Like, I think your stuff in particular is a good example of like, fight, I, Brian F. had like a bunch of tweets about this recently where he was like, dude, fighting game content doesn't have to be you playing ranked matches and uh, tutorials or whatever, right? Like there's such a vast amount of stuff that you can create around the genre and like discuss around it. And I think, yeah, people are going to be forced to be a little creative given that everybody's at home like, all right, well, what should I do now? I guess I'll stream myself playing ranked, right? Like there's, you know, there's a demand, I think, for stuff outside of just that kind of stuff. And maybe everybody being home forces that a little bit, I have to suspect. Yeah, there's a, somebody made, uh, um, somebody sent me a, a screen cap of a Reddit post, a uh, highly uploaded one. I think it was something about like how like Isaac Newton like figured out gravity, like while well, he was sick with the flu at home <laughs> and uh and like you know like go and use this time to like you know make something awesome uh, discover something awesome and then the, there's a reply that was so great it was uh yeah but isaac newton didn't have dark souls 3 with dlc yeah <laughs> and, uh, he didn't have animal crossing thing about that, you know and, and and the funny thing about that is that's the game i'm playing right now so <laughs> i'm so i'm going so hard on dark souls 3 like that's the game that like like uh, when I started playing it, like I was just like, okay, this is like this game's insane. I don't know if I can like handle this, right? And then many, many months pass, and then like Corona hits, right? I'm like, okay, well, if there's any time to get back into Dark Souls, it's like, right now. This is it, right? And like I'm like level 74, like uh, uh, assassin right now, and um, like I'm just like it's like my favorite game right now. <laughs> and it's, uh, right now, the, the, yeah, the games I'm playing is are that is that and and Grand Blue yeah and uh and i don't know it's kind of a good time i want to g- grind a little bit more uh yeah grand blue first that seems like such a big hit to so many people i'm like i'm very i don't know about you but i was talking to people in my local scene before everything and we are all kind of like in agreement that before grand blue came out we all thought it was going to suck like that was sort of the general consensus was all of us that were like yeah when we heard it yeah, or saw I wasn't this hyped game, about it either like yeah to be honest yeah, but I, I was actually surprised when I played the game. I was like, this is actually, like, really cool. And yeah. there's some, like, I'm a big Street Fighter fan, obviously. Um, and, like, oh, there's, like, some, like, you know, this, there's some stuff in here that can really appeal to, to Street Fighter players, too. And, and uh, yeah, I've just been, like, playing it. And then I, I watched the, we did the online tournament where I commentated. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, like, I just saw some, like, some hype stuff that people were doing. And, and I got inspired to, like, try to... Um, you know, play this game. I was I was actually curious how that this game was being received like in the West because yeah. it is still you know kind of like anime you know aesthetic and uh, you know there's um, you know Grand Blue is not like a mainstream. Uh, no, uh, I still know nothing, the, nothing about it. Yeah, like I don't I don't know any of the characters. You know, the character I'm playing could be like you know like from some weird land, an alien. I, I don't know. Yeah. Like, there's no lore. Um, so I, I just, I'm just playing right now for like the cool visuals and and uh, mechanics and you know yeah. just it's a fun game to play. But I don't know. Is it? Is it you think it's getting picked up um, in the states, or do you think it's kind of like still? I, I think so. Juno was like talking the other day about how he feels like in Japan, literally every human being that's ever been interested in fighting games, and even more people were playing it. And in the West, it's maybe not so big. I think here, like, yeah. there is, is definitely interest in it. Like, there are p- certain people championing championing the game. Like, Justin is obviously a big one, uh, especially. I know Vi likes the game a lot. And then, yeah. like, in, in Europe, I mean, like, Leffen is streaming the game all the time. I'm streaming the game all the time. I love the game. I think it's very fun. But, yeah, yeah I don't know yeah. that it is picked up in the same kind of way. But the local numbers and the viewership, to me, has been really good. Like, my viewership... I was looking at my, tw- I love looking at like analytics. I find them so interesting. And looking at analytics, my average viewership for Grand Blue was like the highest out of any game I had ever streamed after streaming the game for like a month and a half, like which was I thought was really interesting. I didn't suspect that okay. to be the case. Uh, but a lot of people were like really interested in it. The only thing that was close was like Guilty Gear because I streamed Guilty Gear when Rollback got announced and like 18, oh, yeah. like 1,800 people came to the stream. To- which is just yeah, so absurd right. right but like yeah it was really funny to look at it yeah. that way that's but, kind yeah. of like your topic like uh you've talked a lot about like yeah you know you've yeah. you've probably done more than um any any uh like uh 
influencer to talk about the importance of netcode and when, stuff like that. When you're like in a parking garage and there's like a deep voice and he offers you a check <laughs> to make an analysis video on rollback netcode, it didn't come from me. <laughs> I just want you to know that even if you see the hair sticking out of the trench coat, it wasn't me. It was someone else. Yeah. Uh, well, the thing is, like, I guess for me, like, I mean, netcode is kind of like, like, I know Grand Blue is delay based netcode, but if I'm being completely frank, like, you know, I've my matches have been really good. Oh yeah, and it feels offline. But I know that like, you know, I'm from Texas, right? So I know, um, I know how important rollback netcode is. You're from I, Texas? You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm from Texas. I had no idea. I I thought you were for some reason. I thought you were from like Florida. I don't know why. Oh okay. Oh man, Florida, really? I thought I was like he escaped and he made um, it into the away from all the people partying right now for <laughs> spring break. Yeah, um, yeah, but the internet in Texas is not that great. And as a matter of fact, it's so it's so funny. Like when I did the, I was uh, visiting my parents in Texas for the uh, when I was finishing up the, the white button mashing doesn't work video, and um, and I was I had these cuts finished, and it's kind of a long video, right? And I like to encode in like high quality so that it ends up looking decent on YouTube. So the files are big, and I like uploading. I'm like, oh, this is gonna take like like more than like, like two days to upload this. Oh my this. god! And I was like, "This is this is terrible." So like, I actually had to drive. I put on a USB stick and I drove to my sister's apartment, and uh, just basically, like she she had like really um I forget like they have like Spectrum or or some kind of like service called I think I want to say Spectrum. Mm -hmm. It's called Spectrum, but it was like it's like much faster, right? So. And then remember, I had to like upload it. I had like re-uploads oh and stuff. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so I had to like drive back and forth to my my sister's apartment, which is like a good like forty minutes away, and because uh, that that would be faster to drive yeah. there forty minutes, upload it, and drive back than to just upload it at my parents' house. There's also one video where like I I finished on my mom's like all-in-one Acer like computer, <laughs> that was, like yeah. really old, and that was like. That was a terrible experience. So that I, I don't know. Some some people who've been following my Twitter probably saw that I, I have these mini PCs that I made. Yeah. Like these, um, was that the reason? PCs. Yeah, that was like that was like the final straw. Because like I was like I was like literally taking um, like because I, I also have family in Europe. Um, my wife is from Norway, mm -hmm. and uh, so like during the the course of that video, like on my Patreon, I make a little Patreon. I made a little Patreon like video about like. The shit I had to go through to get this video done, but I brought like our um, uh, a computer from from my apartment in Korea all the way to to Europe to to Norway and to, to work on the video because I don't I don't have a strong laptop. My laptop's like an ultra ultra book, right? You can't sure. really edit on it. So I I went there with this like tower. <laughs> And uh, I couldn't like I couldn't fit all my clothes, so like it was just like I had I did, I sacrificed clothes. You like open the tower. Them. You're like stuffing socks in your graphics <laughs> yeah. card fan. No, I, I actually stuff stuff in the tower. Right, that's <laughs> a good. Like that. If you're like taking stuff, no, it actually that's that's actually um, a good strategy. So um, yeah, I did that, and then like the combination of those experiences made me like realize like okay, um, I can I need to get like a really strong laptop, but I don't like strong laptops because they're not as modular. You can't sure. like. You know, they go bad then if a part breaks or something I don't, I don't like the idea of that so i got into like mini pcs and i went down that rabbit hole and like actually the one the computer that i have now is like uh even smaller than the one that i posted um i got a new case and i put even like smaller components but they're all like uh they're all like full desktop strength like graphics yeah. cards and, and and processors they're like uh so it's like a little desktop and yeah so um yeah just Get a laptop or or, or a small or become PC obsessive about have. building small PCs. Yeah, yeah. That was a, I mean, that was like a weird hobby that I guess. Uh, uh, Sp Spencer, I tagged him. I think in one of the tweets that you made, he's like the guy that streams and builds a lot of the PCs for Tenno, who does like CPT oh, yeah, and TWT yeah, yeah. and stuff. Like, so he, when I see their setups and their rigs, sometimes like I'll go somewhere and Spencer will have this tiny little like setup that he's streaming, like you know CPT or TWT or like whatever it oh, is yeah. off of, where the mixer is like 19 times bigger than like whatever the PC he's using is. It's like really yeah, fascinating yeah. to look at. No, you, you have to like um, know that. So I'm sure Spencer knows way more than I do about this stuff. Um, but like, uh, it's uh, 
yeah, I've been I've been into computers for a long time. I figured. Spencer in the chat says, "Bro, that was TWT in Peru. He brought he brought like a mini setup to Peru. <laughs> he just got this little pocket sized PC. I can just imagine. He's yeah. Dude, there's a community around it. Like there's like a small form factor PC like community, and like they're always like you know showing off like the latest cases and like you know what they've accomplished. And like this stuff is like you really have to DIY because it's not like you can't just go to the store and buy like these computers with these specs. You have to just build it and and like people get have creative ways of like cooling their pcs they'll like make like uh fan ducts out of cardboard and like you know put it in their case and like it's it's pretty insane so it's 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 a fun hobby i actually that's kind of like one of my favorite new hobbies that and i guess dark souls right now (laughs) and those are not bad hobbies i'll be honest yeah yeah i mean this is a good time you just get everything shipped to you and you stay inside and you build pcs and then like that's all there is to (laughs) it right it's like not that bad yeah yeah so i'm i'm uh yeah but i guess it doesn't matter now because i'm not gonna be traveling much for the uh you know in the next few months so yeah uh, i wanted to bring it bring my little pc and show it off and um but yeah dang that's sad that that makes me feel sad too because there i don't know if you saw this tweet but there's a tweet from somebody that was about tasty steve wandering through cityscapes in 2020 asking people to make noise but there's like no one on the streets like it (laughs) was like yeah it's just like yeah. it's like a twilight zone episode where steve's walking around trying to get people to make noise and like no one will make noise and i was like oh, man, man that really is the life we're living currently it's yeah, so fascinating that's, that's it's just sad and depressing but yeah, yeah. i mean it's it's, it's it's interesting the you know the, remember like corona was kind of like people kind of joked about it and then yeah. like later it was like oh this is actually kind of scary now yeah <laughs> like, there was a there was a moment a period where like it was just a flu was... for like a week and a half it was just the flu. Yeah, you're yeah. young it was that for like a week and a half i remember that period for sure yeah i remember uh, yeah so i was at evo japan and that was like when yes. it was still not like you know like it was just like it was just starting right mm-hmm. and uh to, to get recognized um like uh around and, and i think juna was like the juna had a mask on mm-hmm. and um like i met him and like he was looking back he was so on top of this like he was like he's like yeah like you know i want to try to get out of here as soon as i can i remember uh, that you know coronavirus and and i was like oh what's this this virus thing and i looked it up like oh okay there's like a little thing brewing and and then now it's just like i'm thinking back to that moment it's like man like juna had like for once juna was right he like he was wearing a mask And, like, legit, he was like, I have commentary right now. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going home. That's what he told me. Like, every day, he's like, as soon as I'm done commentary, I'm going home. I don't want to be here. There's too many people. I'm going to get corona, bro. And he just left every day. Yeah. So Which is... Now, uh, now looking back, uh, yeah, maybe we all should have been more cautious. But I don't know. It's... How are we supposed seems to, to be? Do? Yeah. I mean, there's the... It's one of those, like, uh, I think, is it is it black swan theory? Uh, where, like, uh, it's, like, a very small chance of happening but it has a huge consequence if it does happen yes and kind of one of those things where yeah you can't really you you can't really uh predict right so all of a sudden yeah. and i guess not anyone's fault in that uh, you know like you know it's it's not like oh you canceled your event mm-hmm. like you know this is you know you're you, you're an idiot for it you know you you messed up it's this is just like it's one of those act of god things right right so um i don't know i hope that the tournament organizers can get like their money back for uh for the events i've, I've been seeing some of that um it can be because you invest a lot of money into these events and you you make a lot of agreements and deals and yeah it's just one of those things where um uh is it force force majeure or, yes or whatever yeah like, that's it, if the government or you get forced to shut down, then then you can get like, uh, you know, get your money back or whatever. I I I don't know. Yeah, I don't the... I don't know the exact situation, but I do know that it's like one of those situations. It's like a standoff where like if the, if the TO themselves cancels, they lose everything they put into it. But if they cancel, like the event or is forced to cancel, like the hotel or the event space or whatever is forced to cancel by like the government or the county or the state or the government, like whoever it is that shuts them down, then they will refund the money. So yeah, it's kind of like a standoff where it's like, we're not canceled yet. We're going to see what's going to happen. And they're just waiting for, yeah. you know, the official shutdown from whoever owns the venue space. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. So like, 
this is kind of one of those moments where um, it's just like it's such a tough time for like uh, TOs and event organizers and yeah. like I, it, now people are talking about like um, you know how how even in the summer are, are summer events going to get canceled? Right? Yeah, I mean I suspect a, a lot time, of them will. Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people are saying initially when this started, like picking up, people were, were hoping that it was like a seasonal thing, where like once uh, it got to spring, it would like die down. Um, but I guess like it's it's getting pretty close to that, and it's not happening yet. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm I'm wondering if it's like if what if this just becomes a new thing, uh, a, a fact of life, right? What if like like seventy percent or eighty percent of people do end up getting it, right? Uh, will it at that point will people just eventually be like this is just a fact of life now and we just like it's it's another disease we have to deal with like a yearly like a on. flu a general flu or whatever or a cold that's always around. yeah like is it going to be i guess the, the problem is we know people don't have enough information about this virus so as people understand it better um i think people will be less freaked out about it but it, we, you can't just cancel school like forever yeah. right like there's <laughs> You know, there's there's got to be a limit to that, right? And yeah. there's like yeah. irrational things too, because like, you know, when there was like, there was like a hundred cases like in in Tegu in Korea, like people were like just like freaking out super hard, right? And then, but now like, people there's still like a hundred cases appearing now, which is like a lot lower than before. But because it's a lot lower than before, uh, people like that's fine. People, Everybody just go back to yeah, school. Yeah, it's like go people back are kind of like, okay, well things are you know getting better, and like people are getting more complacent. And, uh, but then it's like, you know, um, yeah, people are not rational about these things. Right. So, uh, I guess the, the question is if this just, if Corona is a fact of life, when will people just, you know, realize that and be like, okay, we're all going to go out and yeah, people, we're going to do mean, our thing again. Bored. Yeah. People like, like you can only stay in for so long until you realize like you just, you have to like do something. Right. You yeah. Have to, so like how long, you know. There's that study with the, um, uh, there's that famous study where they took a bunch of people in like a room with like a, a button, yeah, and you press the yeah. button and it, it shocks, like, shocks you. you, like a real painful electric shock, and it was a, it was like a test of like, like boredom, right? Like, you know, how long would it take for the bored person in the room to like press the button? And like it was like fairly quick, and yeah. you know, it showed like people would rather have like physical pain than to just be bored. I think the video I watched, the guy made it like less than a minute. He like made it less <laughs> than a minute before he was like just to like see what it would do and i i i was watching that and i was like dude i could last way longer than that you know what i mean like yeah. it was one of those situations i couldn't believe it i was like man you I clearly have never minute. fought in a fighting game against a character that could kill you in one hit like if you fought yeah. against you know lancelot <laughs> online you're like all right i just gotta sit here and chill for a while i guess life you know yeah. i'll just wait it out oh man lancelot yeah yeah what a character right yeah, I hope they. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm just getting interested in fairy, and people are talking about fairy getting nerfed, and we'll see what they, they uh, what they do. I'm very curious about what the patch is like in, in April, I guess, for that game. But that, I mean, yeah, that game I feel like is so fascinating, and it would have such a cool international tournament scene. But again, it's one of those things we just haven't gotten to see, right? Yeah, yeah. I hope, um, I hope that game can uh, get a bit more traction because I'm, I'm actually like um, enjoying it a lot, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I've, I've been playing. My, my fighting games have been like Street Fighter V, Tekken, Seven, um, and, uh, and yeah, Grand Blue. Those have been kind of my main games, and Punch Planet, of course. Yeah, that's, uh, that's that game is uh, cool. I mess with it on yeah, stream. Cool, it's, but, it's very cool. Yeah, but there's like literally like three people <laughs> played in this country that I know of. So I see. Um, but it has GGPL. It does. Um, the netcode is great. Yeah, actually played uh, when I play people on West Coast. It's like it's playable. It's mm -hmm. it's not like a super good connection, but it's is certainly playable, and uh, that's amazing. I think uh, yeah, netcode is one of those things. And, and another thing, another thing though is like living in a place where they there is like good internet, like yeah. fast internet, and everyone's like close to each other. Um, I realized like something about like the the Street Fighter Five netcode. So like Street Fighter Five, if, if there's a good connection. Like it's like amazing. Like right, it, sure. it, Street Fighter V does have like it's it's rollback, right? So yeah. when it's working good, right? But it's when it gets to that desync issue, right? Where it's just like yeah, you know, yeah. like it gets progressively worse. And I don't know, like I haven't tried the new patch extensively to see like if that really uh, improved anything. But like the the thing that was, was always weird about 
to me about the Street Fighter V netcode is that I would be, you know, I just be playing with people who theoretically shouldn't have such a bad connection, right? Sure, yeah. And um, like, it's like, you know, we both have like really fast internet connections and we get good connections to everybody else. But then if, if it's just us two, then it's like completely unplayable. And it's like, it's yeah. weird because like people said like I the internet provider I have and the internet provider that he that my cousin has is like different and they don't work you know, well together. So that's the issue. The other thing I was going to say is like about that is the one thing that always was painful to me about Street Fighter Five is like playing someone and you play someone and you beat them in like a close match or something. You're like good games. And they're like, they come in and they're like, did it look as bad for you as it did for me? And you're like, oh, no, oh. like you don't even then feel satisfaction about playing the match because then you're like, yeah. You're like, damn! I didn't even know the whole time that the game looked awful for him, and it looked great for me. And you just like that moment of like, oh man, how? What percentage of my matches are like this where yeah, I'm a, winning and I don't biggest, know? The biggest um, realization that I had um, about the the netcode problem was um, when uh, I think there was a Korea versus Japan, like uh, I think twenty v twenty, like oh yeah, the top twenty players from each country playing Street Fighter Five, and uh, and it was crazy. It was like Korea was like way down and like i think it went down to verloren right he was like the last player like the last hope and there's like the the players that he had to beat were like just like the the who's who of like street fighter right it's like you know like itazan like momochi yeah, it was like fudo and like the list of people was yeah, like, absurd like mago it was just like it was like a top eight evo right and it's like and like verloren had to like play them and like and verloren did it like it was like him versus like he had to like beat five of these like amazing top players and it was an online event um, and then, like, you know, like, like they all celebrated. And I was like, whoa, you know, good job, Lauren. And then, like, I looked at the um, the streams from both the Japanese end and the Korean end. And I was watching Momochi's match, which I think was the final match was Momochi versus Lauren. And uh, Momochi's screen was just, like, like, it was terrible. It was, like, super laggy. And, like, and then Lauren's screen was, like, completely, like, yeah. it was perfect. It was, like, there was, like, nothing wrong with that. And and uh, and then I looked back and I was like, I was just like, yeah, this is that's so brutal for the awful. for the moment, right? And like the satisfaction, yeah. even the satisfaction of the win at that point is like, oh, yeah, because like I'm sure like for Lauren, like like you know he was probably like super like hype at that moment and felt like he'd accomplished something you know huge. And then like, you yeah, granted it's an online tournament, but like you know it still means something, right? But then yeah. like when you have that one sided rollback problem, like, uh, yeah, that. That was the moment when I when I realized, okay, there's, um, you know, it's like kind of those one step forward, two steps back kind of things where it's like, you know, it's like, all right, it's cool that they made this, you know, they went to roll back, right? Is, but you know, the execution, right? So, um, hopefully, like, uh, well, I don't, I mean, it seems like they've they're doing some stuff but they're they're on the right track but who knows what's happening you know they're trying to make adjustments they they said that there's going to be a new adjustment i think march 24th or something like that if i remember correctly okay march 24th okay. They, i think it was like a region based thing that they were planning to do because brian f only plays people who are in other countries and he tweets about it constantly and was pissed so they were like okay we should probably do some kind of region lock region locking or maybe <laughs> regional based matchmaking or something like that but you know what has happened i've realized no matter who i chat with no matter what happens on this channel netcode comes up it's like an infection that we can't escape <laughs> from for some reason and yeah. somehow yeah it's uh yeah and uh yeah basically you're pac patient zero right with that video that uh that really uh <laughs> Is I just, I literally just yelled. I, I don't yeah. know what happened. I just suddenly one day looked at the screen and said, you know what would be great is if like online play worked better. You guys should ask for this. And I think it was one of the least I had really thought about a topic before I even came into talking about something. And yeah, the only thing I really did it is because for a while my hands were super messed up and I couldn't play any yeah. games. So I just talked on stream for like three or four hours a day, every day. And that's okay. all I did because I couldn't play games. So then eventually I just snapped and then I started yelling and then that was it. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I mean, the netcode awareness um, is good. <laughs> uh, it, it is It is good. I mean, we can talk awareness. about it. It's, uh, it's, it, it, it does need to, yeah, it, it needs to improve. And but it's just like people have been talking about it for so long and it's mm -hmm. like, like, I don't know. Does it does it have an effect? I think it does at some level, but you can't see it. Like it's not like there's a clear 
things. They, like developers kind of like they have a lot of priorities on their list. Sure, and, yeah. And uh, there is just like some stuff like it's almost like it's kind of like you have to get lucky that that thing that you want is like on their list of things to fix. I, um, the good news is that Arxis has decided that that should be on their list for the new game, huh? That is surprising, yeah. but very cool to me that that's something. No, that, that's a, that, that was amazing news. Um, yeah. That was like, uh, yeah, like during all this Corona stuff, like that's one thing that was like, oh, like that's, that's really cool. Cause you know, during these times, obviously people are going to stay inside playing off or online more. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, that's, um, uh, and you know this isn't going to be the last time where something like this could happen, right? So, um, oh, here comes your cat just let out a roar. That was impressive. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah, basically they want to play, but I'm I'm working. You're working. kind of <laughs> in a very important of. business meeting. Well, to be fair, yeah. it's probably been about that time. I would suspect we talked for about. Can you? Would you even know how long we chatted for? Um, I do know because we Damn had it. the time here. Damn it! <laughs> that's not the. That's not fair. I was gonna guess. Like, I feel like I looked over and I suddenly was like, "Oh my god, this has been very lo- longer than I expected for us to sit and chat." But I think you and I both knew that if we started talking, it was just gonna. It was gonna ask forever. Like we were just gonna yeah, keep yeah, talking. No, yeah, it's, a, it's always fun to talk. Like you know, whenever we meet at events, it's, yeah, we always have like these conversations. I'm glad that some of this, some of our conversations were uh, able to get on uh on this podcast so yeah apparently people uh, yeah, really uh, want me to ask you if you'd like whataburger <laughs> oh, like whataburger yeah um i actually i i do like whataburger it's it's man it's, it's a it's a 24 hour place mm-hmm. so like sometimes it can be get kind of grimy there but like um i do like mustard on my burgers apparently okay. that's but, uh, i think whataburger like puts mustard in their burgers that's kind of like their their thing but um but yeah is is Waterburger like only a southern? southern it's in thing? Texas yeah. primarily. I I had a I went to Texas and I tried it twice on one trip and I disliked it yeah. immensely both oh. times. Okay, well I'm not offended. That's that's fine because I don't think it's like amazing or anything. So, See, isn't this a normal response? My chat room has been Texans have been hounding me about my anti Waterburger opinion for so long, for so my, long. My, I don't understand why. I know, but my wife when she had. Water burger for the first time. She just like, she didn't like the ratio of the bread to the meat. So she just like, just like took off one of the buns. I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, like, is there something wrong with like, do, do people think this water burger is weird? Like, I don't know. It's just I did like the spicy ketchup. When I mention it, I will always say spicy ketchup was a hit with me, <laughs> and the milkshake I had was cool. So yeah, I'm with it. I mean, it's I'm I'm pretty like I'm pretty flexible with food. I'm not like. Um, uh, the only thing I don't really like is raw onions, and then but if I if I get it, then I'll just be like, okay, I'll just eat it anyways. Like, yeah, life goes on. on yeah, pizza. Life goes. yeah I, uh, so that's like the when it comes to food. So um, I do love food. It's just like yeah, I, you're too I busy playing Dark Souls, I, you know. Really yeah, Dark Souls is a good game. Everyone out there should try Dark Souls three, and. Uh, you're going to get to the part where you're like, this game sucks. I hate it. It's I can't believe they made a game like this. And then you'll come back to it like months later and then you'll get into it. You know, I, I had that happen where I tried to play Dark Souls 3 and it didn't click with me. And I haven't tried to play it again. Re- Recently, my stream has been like, you should try Dark Souls 3 again. Oh, I, really? I hit, no, This exact thing happened to me where I played it and it just didn't. There was nothing about it that I was like, this game is hella sick. It just didn't click with me. I don't know why. Yeah, it, it's weird. Like it, it didn't. For me, and then like the thing that made me realize, like, uh, it's just kind of a, it's one of those games where like it's it is of course it's very hard, but like right. there's like a the more you get into it, the more you start like discovering new places and and beating stuff. Like, you know that it's it's designed to be beaten, um, but you just need to you just need to grind out certain parts like multiple times. Like you you'll die at a boss like so many times. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I guess it doesn't really sound like coolest thing ever like, it's, it's not described in a way a that you're like oh you gotta play that it's just like you're gonna I die and suffer it's hard to sell that game it's, it really is it's like yeah you're just gonna like die a lot and <laughs> you're gonna get frustrated and, and want to throw your controller because those are all things that have happened to me in that game but like for some reason like i want to play like every day so i don't know there's something there's something about that 
Well, I'll let you go and play Dark Souls 3, and I have a meeting with Big Netcode to discuss some of our f- future moves about... Uh, oh. You know, yeah, I got to... <laughs> All right. Change the FGC. Make yeah. it, like, ready for this... this- pandemic so we, we got a corona still- proof as much as we can i have a discussing a discussion with big rollback about uh you know defunding some of the big delay movements and stuff that have happened over the last 20 years or so so we're gonna right. try to push some progressive bills through and see if we can do that so thanks for coming through i really appreciate it this is the first episode i did and i thought uh you would be someone who is very fun to talk to especially like with everything going on i feel like you and i we don't get to chat too it's only really at events that you and i ever get to yeah. talk and yeah, yeah, the fact that the first thing you said was, wow, this is that podcast you told me you were going to start like two and a half years ago. You finally did it. I feel extremely <laughs> motivated. In fact, I'm like rage motivated, not rage, it's like vindictive. I'm like, I'm going to fucking podcast the fuck out of this podcast. Like it's like, I feel right. like I have a duty to continue doing it. So this is a good uh, start. Yeah, definitely. I look forward to, um, you know, uh, watching this podcast and uh, I'm actually pretty excited about it too. I'm glad it finally happened and Glad I could be the first guest. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, and I'm sure as soon as April 1st comes around, I'll be watching this analysis video and checking it out and be like, oh, yeah, this is the thing that he mentioned he was doing while he was grinding Dark Souls nonstop. All right. So awesome. thanks for coming through. I appreciate all the viewers for coming through. Hey, where can everybody find all your stuff? And if they want to follow you everywhere, where can they find that? Um, yeah, just uh, I guess <laughs> go on YouTube and type in Corey Gaming, I guess, or... I don't know. If they, if they want to find my stuff, they could probably find it, right? <laughs> that was sick. Yeah, you should type in Corey Gaming. Just do that. That was yeah. tight. The I the amount know. of space the cat took up on the screen was incredible. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, it's like right behind the, the, the camera. So I here, thought it was a feather duster, shot. too. Is, is this a different cat? Oh, it's the same one. No. Well, yeah, so um, yeah. say say bye to, to say jam. Poncho? Yeah, Poncho. This is Poncho. Poncho. Later, Poncho. And later, chat room. You guys have a good one. Thanks to Gerald for coming on. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out, everybody. (laughs) See you.